Mm -hmm. All right, I'll call this meeting to order for November the 19th, 2019. <clears throat> Result of the agenda for the November 19, 2019 regular meeting of council to be approved. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. <laughs> Result of the minutes of the November 5, 2019 regular meeting, council meeting, and the November 6, 2019 special committee of a whole strategic planning meeting and the November 12, 2019 committee. The whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor <clears throat> Morio. All in favor? Okay. Moving to 6.1, result of the building permits 80, 19 through 84, 19, with a total estimated value of $42,000 be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Deputy Mayor Latoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <laughs> Resolved that the letter dated November 8, 2019, from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police regarding their invoice for municipal policing services for the period July 1st to September 30th. 2019 be received as information. Moved by <clears throat> Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, Mr. Cool, do we know how is this, are we on track with the budget with their invoicing? Yes, it's been the same over the past uh, couple of years, I guess. Further discussion? All in favor? Seven point one. Result of the Director of Public Works report for October and November 2019. You received this information. Moved by <coughs> Councillor Deputy Mayor Lantoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Moving down to seven point two. <coughs> Council reports. Start with Councillor Freeze. What? <laughs> report time. Um, nothing really to report other than the strategic council meeting we had here. Um, I think it went well. I think uh, Mr. Carter does a good job leading us along and uh, we have some good discussions. I want to give hats off to the Valley Stage players who put on a weekend of very, very diligent hard work. They did a great job of the play. Um, Brewing Club uh, did the plated meals to the people that came. There was, I think, 200 Friday and Saturday night total, and then Sunday was a dessert day. So. Good job to the Valley State players. Okay. Council Morio. A uh, couple of meetings we had the strategic plan um, planning session we had. I'm uh, very pleased as to um, the progress and the steps that we're um, achieving in that plan with the assistance of Mr. Carter, which, uh, which is great. Uh, November 12th, we had the committee of the whole um, where we discussed the number of issues. Um, November 15th, I had a meeting with uh, some hospital staff, UCN staff, and the MLA uh, regarding a request for the town to support um, and bring to the minister's uh, uh, ear uh, some potential funding request uh, for an LPN to RN training program here in the valley. So um, hopefully we can uh, be succeeded in that. And with the Citizens on Patrol uh, program that I'm heading up, uh, there will be a public uh, information meeting in early December uh, with a date yet to be determined, but uh, the plan is to have an information session uh, for the public to attend as to what's involved and what not, and a presentation from hopefully the uh, provincial coordinator on that, and I'm striving for early December on that. So that's all I got. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, I took the tomato and told me. Um, for myself, just to talk about and maybe put out a request that we have a, de a, a developers meeting prior to next council meeting. Uh, municipal developers? Municipal developers meeting, yes. Um, so hopefully we have that before our next council meeting. And just dealing with some airport commission issues and working through those. And then um, a meeting with RISE. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. We can talk about it when we get down to RISE itself. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Councillor White. Oh, the the uh, strategic plan of the six, uh, it's a very positive process, looking at ways to make our community better. I appreciate that. Uh, compliment also uh, the community foundation dinner, which I had the pleasure to attend. Uh, what a wonderful organization spending money for the valley as a whole, the whole valley working collaboratively. And the November 12th with the uh, committee of a whole, we met with the RCMP and the importance of reporting all suspicious activity communicating with the RCMP, regardless of if you think it's uh, special or not, because they need to know what's going on, and that's one of the better ways to solving crime. And on the 15th, we went to go off into a Prairie Mountain Health meeting, uh, where they uh, opened the $23 million emergency uh, rooms, uh, which will be available for, obviously, people in the Swan River Valley as a whole also. I <coughs> appreciate that. And then uh, tonight is the uh, strategic plan, which we talked about relative to our meeting with the cabinet ministers when we go to the AMM. And uh, I compliment the mayor for considering making that ahead of time. So thank you, sir. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say something positive to uh, Councilor Morio for your work on Citizens on Patrol. I think it's uh, long overdue. And I thank you, sir, and your teammates for making it happen. That's it? Yep. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Are you ready, Councillor? Yeah, Ryan? nothing to report today. Okay. Councillor Gray. I don't have a lot to report. I can say the zone services at a couple of events. I didn't attend because my brother was in town, but um, and we're going to have a meeting soon. Um, and it's checking along doing wonderfully. Um, I agree with Councillor White about the foundation. I attended the same dinner and it was uh, well done uh, and it was. Uh, positive for our community. Um, Swan Valley Rec Commission, I believe all of the county municipalities have now passed resolutions agreeing to the process of deciding what we're going to do. Um, it took some time, but they've now done that. So I think we're meeting, I'm not sure what Patty's setting, is setting up but next week or the week after to um, go through the process of setting that up and deciding what we're going to do. And just to, as an alert, you'll recall that if we, if Patty, um, Patty's proposals and, and whatever went through that, that committee, um, that that would mean an increase in our overall budget for recreation. Although we already have a pretty high budget, but ours, our budget right now is primarily on facilities, quite heavily. Um, the third thing about that um, is that one of the things that we should look at, Mr. Mayor, at some future meeting presumably a committee of the whole, is the structure of, of, of those external committees like RISE and the Rec Commission. I, I firmly believe that we should be recruiting um, citizens to uh, be on those boards rather than uh, councillors, uh, unless the councillors have that particular expertise. Um, and I think that's a much more prudent way of us doing that, but that's a matter for further debate and something I'm going to ask that we put on as a debating point at some later point. Um, I agree with Councillor Antonio. We're going to have a lengthy debate on RISE coming up. Um, I think it's been the, the RISE board is pretty, pretty positive. I can tell you one thing uh, there was agreement um, to um, transfer the uh, school in Minnetonas to the uh, RM Minnetonas Bozeman. Uh, let them have it, and, and then we'll see if we can negotiate something with them if, if RISE continues to exist, which is the first step then we'll see if we can negotiate with them. Otherwise, they'll do with them whatever they do. That's it. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, for me, um, just in the last couple of weeks, Community Foundation was mentioned, as well as Valley Stage players. I did both, and, and both are beneficial to everyone in the Valley, especially Community Foundation and what they do and what they've 
pulled in. It's just amazing what this group has done, and, and everybody in the Swan River Valley has benefited from this, this group and continue on for generations to come. Valley Stage Players, um, this group, a small group of people that work so hard to bring entertainment, you know, I'll say that it's finest, it's, it was very entertaining. But you know what they do, and, and, and actually to turn those dollars back over uh, to the community. We've been a benefactor of that as far as the sound system <coughs> in our Veterans Hall, which we thank them for. And now this year they have um, given the proceeds to the Curling Club, you know, who is in need of some equipment there. <coughs> so thank you to them. I say the same about the Citizens on Patrol program, which is, uh, I think that is. It's just one of those steps we, we have to work towards crime reduction and uh, we're closer to the community. Um, I will say it's interesting, Councillor Gray's comment about the structure of our committees, and I agree. In fact, it was something that uh, the CEO and I had a discussion about here just in the last week. And uh, definitely, if we have people that want to be on a committee, definitely, but def we'll, we'll set that up for a cow meeting and, uh, and have further discussion on it. Moving ahead to looking at the EMM next week, we are, I think we're, we're ready to meet with the ministers and probably have a little bit more uh, items to add, but we're prepared for it anyways, and uh, I look forward to that. And some of the counselors that were here in the past are used to the booklet, and I don't, and I understand, as I write Mr. Crow, that we're not going to get the booklet this year. Uh, they're going to hand them out at the door, well, they're going to have uh, them. but you can uh, you can download an online one. To yeah, on so I downloaded them all already and read through the resolution, so that is available for whoever wants to download it on your on your smart devices or whatever. So and that's it for me. Go ahead. I forgot to mention thank you for laying your wreath at Remembrance Day. Oh. I thought it was a really good thank service, you. and that uh, was nice that <clears throat> the town was represented. Yes, and a fact on that. Um, it, it was good to see the individual speak at the service. I knew that with my kids sitting there and, and listening to the stories, that that was pretty powerful. Councillor Gray. Um, one last thing. We have um, a request. I, I've sent a letter to, to the administrator at the next committee of the whole meeting. Would it be possible to set aside some time for us to discuss that issue? And we'd have to invite the uh, foundation. Board. Right. Okay. All right. So moving on. <clears throat> Result that the CAO, the CAO report for October and November of 2019 be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Um, any questions or comments to Mr. Crow? It's a well done report. It's lengthy. I, Read it over uh, a couple nights ago, but uh, any questions, Council Moria? Uh, how are we doing on the advertisement of the uh, clerk? Uh, clerk, we have a candidate who's going to be starting uh, next Monday. Uh, the assistant CIO position is there's not any people applying, so I've, I've checked around and I've made a few phone calls and. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll have a, we'll have a candidate list soon. So, okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <laughs> okay, 9.1. Result of the 2019 Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy levy in the amount of $50,000, $970, and proof of payment moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Deputy Mayor Tony. Okay, I'll we'll start the discussion. We you have a lot of information there, so that if you need to take some time to read through it or whatever, we'll take our time, but uh, I'll open up for discussion. Did you find that original material? Thank you. Oh. Sorry, I didn't have a chance to print a bunch of copies. Councillor Delorier. So the Resolutions that were passed at the RISE meeting on Thursday. Can you, um, I know we don't have the minutes, but it's close to what they what was actually passed. Can you relay that to us, somebody that was there? 
Yeah, I can't. I can't. Just give me okay. two seconds. <coughs> Do, do we want to take like a small recess just for everybody to kind of have a chance to uh, look at that bit? Yeah. Okay, we'll just call a small recess. All right, go ahead. So the last resolution that uh, the one that most people are interested in about is be resolved that to continue to be a member in, or to be a, sorry, be it resolved that to continue to be a member, each member by December 31st must pay its full share of the 29th contributions as invoiced by the rise sorry contribution as invoice to the rise budget and number two that a member <clears throat> must execute an agreement that commits the municipality to fund rise on its approved budget according to the allocation model that has been passed for the next three years until December 31st 2022 and thereafter, no member may withdraw except upon a clear year's notice to rise without, sorry, a clear year's notice to rise, withdrawing from rise by resolution duly passed by the Council of the Municipality, i.e. that to withdraw for January 1st, 2023, notice must be passed and received by rise no later than December 31st, 2021. So, <laughs> Um, part in there, and I think this is probably the part that caused a lot of issues this year, is uh, I can't remember the exact wording used, but uh, uh, must agree to pay their, their portion of the approved budget. So the process is such that, that RISE will develop their budget, approve their budget. What Recourse does a municipality have? Let's say you go, you got that rise increases their budget to half a million dollars or something. We're on the hook for that now, according to this, without any re, without any say. Like there's no there's no review where there's no. It's just a one step. This is it. We're done. Is it? Is that? Yeah. That's how it's happened. Okay. Yes. So and 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 presumably, um, you know. We debated that, and it seemed to me and to others, and, and I'm going to suggest it should seem to you, that if the choose the number two hundred thousand dollars, we went to two hundred thousand dollars, so our contribution would be seventy five thousand dollars, and we said that's way too much. Okay, we, we you haven't proven to us that you're going to use that money wisely or whatever. Um, the members have the ability to remove members and to change that at will. So no one municipality, it's a good effect every municipality is the same. So nobody's going to come in and say, no, we're not doing that. Um, and you can control it in those ways. You can control your members, but you can't control the other three quarters of them. No, but the formula has already been agreed. The formulas have been agreed to. and. But what? But the amount hasn't. Okay, I, I agree. Yeah. But but it, 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 okay, nobody's going to be in a position any worse than any other municipality. So if 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 us and, and the RM Minnetonga or RM Swan River pay or RM Swan Valley West pay about the same amount, if 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 we find it offensive, I'm guessing the RM Swan Valley West is going to do it. I'm guessing if RM Swan Valley West says, "Well, that's way 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 too much." we may be able to be convinced to the same thing. And that, that budget can be changed by the board, by the board again, or by a membership meeting. So that's the control. I mean, the, the alternative is to say that um, we expect right now as municipal councillors, we expect municipal councillors to go in and do things badly. When the assessment comes back, the municipality is going to get a notice of what there is. To admit our budgets are done in advance. Now we can change the, we can go back and suggest that the agreement needs to set a cap on how much can be charged. And in fact, we talked about the fact that we were unlikely to assess anything more than we'd assessed this year, other than um, inflationary increases. But 
that's the control. Control, yeah. Uh, so if I'm translating right, what you're saying is that councils, through their representatives, report back to their respective councils prior to the final budget being, it'd be like a draft budget, this is what a draft number is looking like. Are you guys good for that? Well, our budget, uh, our budget is normal. Okay. This has been an abnormal year, but the year before we passed it like January, everybody knew in January what the assessment was going to be more or less. We, we didn't finalize it though till about April because we had a big debate about what the formula was going to be. We were changing the formula, you recall. Um, this year, the plan would be that we're going to have essentially the same budget. In fact, we expect to have a, actually a reduced budget because we have got a bunch of money that's going to come in that we want to be out, we want to spend, and we have no extra expenditures that are being planned over the budget. But what you're saying is that, like, if any council through their membership doesn't like the budget, they can change their membership to that change the same day. But, but how does the council know what those member what the numbers are if you're going to? We send we, we we send them an invoice, but you send the invoice on a past budget. So how can they go back and change the budget? If if the board is willing, take this year for example, <coughs> the board was willing to change the budget, and now we have, no we have met, to change the budget. There's no what? There was no request to change the budget. I think the fact that two municipalities didn't pay what was requested that is a request in and of itself. Do you think so? That's not what I. That's not the way I view it. Well, it, 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 if it, if it, if they if they were happy with it, they would have paid what they were what was requested. Then obviously they're not satisfied with. Well, I think that's not the issue. I I, I, I mean, if somebody wants to say this is what you shouldn't spend, fair enough. I have no problem with that. And candidly, if, if those two municipalities were unhappy, they had the ability to change their members. Or if this municipality is unhappy, it has the ability to change its members. But changing the member, changing your members, still won't achieve the goal of changing the budget. You only control a quarter of the of the board. Well, okay. Let, let's use the example of of, of this year um, as an example. If Swan Valley West and Arm Mountain had sent four new councillors and communicated that to Rise, who would then would then be communicated to the enemies Valley. Look. This budget is ridiculous. Then, um, then presumably other communities would look at it and say, "Yes, it is. No, it isn't." Right? If four say no, it isn't. You're right. There's no recourse for that year. Absolutely correct. There is no recourse for that year, other than to withdraw. We can't that year. We can't withdraw no, not that year, but other than to withdraw for the future, it's not going to be workable. I mean, we can change, and again, that's our, that's the position, but the contract is, is going to be a contract, so it's a negotiation. So if people, if the municipalities want to say uh, that we're, we're limited to a certain amount of money or whatever, I'm not adverse to that. I just wasn't going to put that in because I didn't know what, I don't think that's the proper way of doing it. I guess I'm, I'm just really concerned. This year, rise increased by almost 75%, roughly from last year, the, their overall budget. And we, sure it did. Maybe, I'm yeah. think. So, and for the most part, we were okay with it. We budgeted for it at budget time. We were, we had consensus that, okay, let's go forward with this. But under this proposed plan that, that was passed on Thursday night, it may, in a future year, it might be us on the other side of the fence where we're, we're feeling like Minnesota goes where town center. I, I would almost, so just so you know, you could have another 75% increase next year for boards of choosers, and we're stuck with it. It almost needs to be that you put in a third of them, some fixed amount that you can budget around where. So, so you know a third of a mil or, or what have you like th that way there, there's some there's some restraint on the board but if if, if our if our assessments go up your the, your budget's going to go up but there's also some some predictability where you're not going to be stuck with two, two or three 75 percent increases here's, years in a row here's the issue though 
the, the reason that the reason that that, that that and I don't have any problem with it, with there being a fixed amount or any amount in the agreement. Um, the problem I have with with it being approved is that um, then one that was the exact problem we had here. Is that any one or two municipalities could just say no, we're not doing it. And the next thing we're in this logger jam and we we're not doing anything because this year the. Economic Development Secretary was a half-time officer. And, and one of the reasons that the rise budget was down was because they'd gone from a full-time economic development officer down to a half-time economic development officer. And then they hired a person to do administrative work. Then they converted that to a tourism work. And it, it, it was it was done all without any sort of involvement or thoughtful strategic plan, which is Everybody here knows how irritating I would have thought that I did find that. I couldn't believe that that's our structure. But if we've got a strategic plan that we're approving, we go back to the council and say, here's our strategic plan. We need an economic development officer. We've got forty or $50,000 for project money. We've got um, a part-time uh, admin assistant or whatever. Uh, we've got some rent here. And this is what the budget's going to be, more or less. And if we need to increase it, the only reason to increase it would be because we need to recruit another economic development officer and we need to pay more because we want somebody of a certain caliber. And then you're right, that might cause an increase in funding. But presumably, it's in everyone's interest to get a solid economic development officer in board for across the valley. I, I, and so I, I think it's problematic to, I, I, I don't disagree with you that maybe there needs to be some limitation that ta that increases can't be more than 10% without the consent of three of the four municipalities or something like that. I think that's a, that's a better way of doing it. But outside of that, uh, what I would suggest is that we're not going to have less than we have. Um, and then we we have, and, and actually rise has a bit of a cushion, so it, it has a year or so of funding if people simply don't pay. Anyway, that's the, the reason. So if you want to suggest we should have a different clause, I I, I don't think there was anybody in rise because we did we discussed that we debated that very point. I don't think there's anybody in rise who didn't, but we we didn't expect that anybody was going to go. Well, be off the rails because I don't think the budget that was presented, given that it went from a, the increase was really recruitment and the paying for an economic development officer, and I think we were offering sixty five thousand dollars or something, which is not excessive <laughs> for an economic development officer. Um, I think that it's not; it wasn't a crazy budget, and there's no reason to believe that everybody's going to go crazy. But if you want to put it in, I have no problem with that. I, I, I actually don't think there's any problem in saying that. Councilor Delorier. So, so the, the resolutions that were passed, in order for them to be binding upon the municipalities, do they need to be, we need to alter the Constitution according to Article 23 in here? I don't think so. There never was a requirement to give a year's notice prior to this, right, to, to the municipalities. In order, so what we agreed all, to. All they, this, all they is, have, this is what we agreed yeah. to. So in order to change this agreement, we need to make a, a, an alteration to this at a, at, a, at, a, at a general meeting with those coming thirty days in advance, according to Article Twenty Three. We we can't remove a member as long as they pay their assessed dues. They can go down from being a full member to an associate member, right? Yes. Right, but they, they lose they, their, their voting rights. Their yes. voting rights. Mm -hmm. So that's what they can do, and and that's they're fully entitled yeah. to do that. But I'm but the the one year clause is that something totally new. This this speaks nothing to that, right? And a, and a, and a rise a resolution at rise has no binding authority. Absolutely over correct. The, over but the that's not what, but that's not what the resolution says. The resolution says the municipality is going to be asked to enter into an agreement. So there's an agreement, a further agreement right. coming? Uh, that, that would be what we would do is an agreement with everybody. That was the whole reason. Is okay. I had the structure of trying to get things through. Because, yep. again, if we're doing this in April, I might have suggested, we might have suggested a different process. But, um, and in fact, there, a better process would be a whole new agreement with the four municipalities that says, this is how we're going to do it. This is the formula. This is what we're doing. So that there's no dispute and, and something that says we're going to have ongoing funding. We're not going to have this fight all the time about people are saying they're in, they're out, they're not paying their full amount, whatever. But so that's why it was done in that formula. It wasn't done as 
mm-hmm. a constitutional piece. And if they don't sign the agreement, they don't sign the agreement, and they can stay in. At that point, we can move the uh, amendments to the, uh, of the if three of the four is <coughs> probably signed. I'm presuming that they would all vote in that way. So in, until an agreement comes to the town of Swan River and and is passed and signed, the the night the one year notice is not binding upon us. All it's binding, all it's binding is if we don't pay our dues for 2019 and then for 2020, we wouldn't be members. Right. We'd have no voting rights. That's what's going to happen. And, and I suspect we're not going to wait a year next year. Uh, I'll put it another way. I don't know because I, we, I guess it depends on, on a whole bunch of things. But, but presumably, the RISE board is not going to wait a whole year and waste another year. At least I wouldn't agree to that. I think we have to get on with it. So we'll let's do our assessment and say, here's how much we want you to pay. You have 60 days, whatever. You haven't paid your dues, you're out. When you pay your dues, you're back in. Till then, you've got no vote. That's pursuant to the Constitution. But And then we would tr- move to amend the Constitution. But in the short term, the idea is to get everyone on board so that we have long-term viable structured funding so that we can get on with economic development because and and you know I, I want to be clear because somebody misinterpreted me recently i'm not suggesting that we shouldn't have all four municipalities involved in fact i think we should involve other members i think we should involve the first nations communities and the metis community um, over and above the four municipalities but if people don't want to come along and pay their share and, and the formula was negotiated with everybody having two votes at the table and agree. And we went through all the possible permutations of why, why is it 50% population, 50% assessment? Is because that's how economic development helps. It helps in people's assessments, but it also helps in terms of populations. And so the bigger the population, the more likely you're going to have some benefit. The bigger the assessments, the more likely you're going to have. And so we have to balance those. And so we came to this determination on a principled basis that it was 50-50, that we were going to take 50% of it, of it based on comparative populations and 50% based on comparative assessments, real property assessments. And, and that formula was agreed by all eight members. Well, that's not true. By seven of the eight members, one member never comes, has never been to a meeting yet. But it doesn't make any difference. Seven of seven voted that way. It was a unanimous vote. So... That's, and, and I expect that's what's going to happen again. I, I, I think it's a, a I, I, I want to have everybody involved, every municipality and everybody. But I want everybody to pay their way. And anybody who doesn't, and this was already considered, anybody who doesn't, sure they can come and participate, they can come and talk, they can do whatever they want. But, you know, um, you go to a potluck and you don't take anything, you probably shouldn't eat. The door, eh? I guess uh, back to last meeting when I was in on the phone and my issue was surrounding quorum and and who would make the decision come January 1st on who's in and who's out and article 16 refer, uh, answers that and actually answers it in a, in favorably quorum uh, shall be a minimum of half the filled director positions and to be a filled director position you have to be a full member and minimum of three total there's another clause that says you have to use between three and eight. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Well, then, and, and this is one of the reasons why I guess we tabled this is so that we can find this information yeah. and, and all that, and, and also members of council going to to rise and and, and debate these these issues. So, well, and, and I do think we should at some point change the constitution. To, Provide for the contract. I, I think that's the proper way of doing it. But right now, we just want to get on with doing something so we can start the process of hiring an economic development officer because we've now been a year almost without one. And yeah, it's just not right. So, so, since there is prospect of uh, constitutional amendments, Article okay. 14, we, do, we have to have an AGM within the first 90 days of 2020 yeah. and within the first 60 days notice of those. Proposed amendments, so I would suggest, based on the resolutions that are passed, that were passed, that we that we do this. In light, light of the fact that quorum will be only full members, and that was my concern last time, and the fact that our members have voted all year, I, I think we should pay the bill. 
All right. <clears throat> well, any other uh, comments, I guess, from the board members or committee members? Councilman Tony, do you have anything? Or, go ahead. Could I just get Councilman Tony to read the full text of the resolution one more time, just for my own peace of mind? Okay. <clears throat> be it resolved that to continue to be a member, each member by December 31st must pay its share, full share of it of its 2019 contribution as invoice to the RISE budget. And that a, this is a, that's the first resolution, and then there's the second part, which is that a member must execute an agreement that commits the municipality to fund RISE on its approved budget according to the allocation model that has been passed for the next three years until December 31st, 2022, and thereafter no member may withdraw except upon a clear year's notice to RISE withdrawing from RISE by resolution, duly passed by the Council of the Municipality. Example, that to withdraw for January 1st, 2023, notice must be passed and received by RISE no later than December 31st, 2021. Those, those resolutions actually make more sense in light of the conversation we had. Um, I, I understand them better. Uh, so should a member municipality not enter into an agreement with RISE. Can't remove them. But if they don't pay, they'll have to pay their dues. If they don't pay their dues, they'd be out, mm -hmm. A. And B, I expect that we will move an amendment of the Constitution in due course. The idea was to get a stable footing this year. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're not prepared to enter into the agreement, then fair enough. Then do what you got to do, and we'll, we'll have a fight at the assembly. Councillor Morial. So if I understand right, we are looking to make some constitutional amendments. We will in due course. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Okay, I'll call it again. All in favor? Recorded vote, please. Okay, recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolved that the council's Almost be hereby approved for payment. General account check, checks number 252372, number 252272 for a total of $737, $607, six, sorry, 671 and 37 cents. Payroll counts check number 4554 to number 4559 for a total of 105178 4 cents. <clears throat> the payroll account checks number 4560 to 4567 for a total of $114,222.42. Moved by Councillor Freeze and second by uh, Deputy Mayor Lintoni. All in favor? Councillor Gray. Well, who is, is Centurion Management? Is that, is that uh, Ron? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's what I thought, but I. I saw his name elsewhere and I was wondering, what the heck is that about? <coughs> and uh, Swan Valley Employment, that's just for their budget. That's because we get the money and then we transfer to them, right? I just, right. I just saw those two things and I couldn't figure out what they were exactly. Yeah, so, okay, I'm ready. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. <coughs> 11.1 resolved that bylaw 12 2019 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish the maximum speed limit for the highways or portions of highways for which the town of Swan River has jurisdiction be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Gray. I just want to say that I have to move that because I made an ass of myself last night <laughs> by saying I didn't know why Bay had a 30 kilometer zone <laughs> and it's been there the whole time. It's just way up high <laughs> as you heard on the day and I never saw it until I was there and I was thinking, I was frustrated thinking, why wouldn't they put a sign up? And as I'm driving by, I'm looking, I go, okay, there'd be a sign up. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Carry. <clears throat> oh, what do we have here? Eleven point two. Yeah. Um, yep. Garbage one, please. I'm missing resolution there. Oh. No. Yeah. Why? Sorry, I left that up to public works. Mm -hmm. I apologize for that. 
There's a bylaw. Bylaw 13299. I need a resolution on Sorry. Oh, I see. So this is for first reading, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's just to bring it on, because I there's some things I want to talk about. It's maybe a little in terms yeah. of, but I'm not sure how we enforce some of them. Yeah, we discussed it last yeah. morning. We did make some changes. To okay. It. So, I'm sorry. I, I was, I sort of phoned in, but I had a... Anyway, is that what's first reading going to continue on the discussion? Okay. Yeah, let's get first reading over and then publish it so people can... This is one where we probably should have a public hearing. Offered at a public hearing because it's going to change some pretty major things. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Although all are are public, right? <laughs> I, I agree with you, but I think we should offer. I can do that. It's it's a pretty big whack if if, it, if we have an offer and then send them the bills and. Oh no! I definitely have to be ahead of it. That's for sure. And this way, if we've offered it, we've publicized it, and they don't come, and you want to complain, you look in the mirror. There you go. Mr. Ford? Okay. Go uh, ahead. Mr. Prentice. Right, Mr. Prentice. <clears throat> Resolve that bylaw 13 2019 be a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish waste, collection, disposal, and recycling systems be read at first time. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolve that bylaw 14 2019 be a bylaw to provide for administration administrative penalty scheme and parking and general bylaw enforcement be read a first time. Moved by Councillor. Memorial, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Um, I guess Councilor Gray. It, this is only for first, uh, that's correct, first reading. First reading, yeah. And Councillor Morio. Uh, the whole document is in the document section of all that uh, for people to review um, if it doesn't show up here properly. So. Okay. There's. I, I do think we might want, there was one in here particular, which is the, the little part. Anyway, um, Councillor Gray? I, I do think we might want to look at some of the fines. Okay. It should be on uh, the next committee of the whole agenda okay. for discussion. Yeah. For that very purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. okay for the discussion. <coughs> in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Was all that pursuit to sections 153 of the Municipal Act Council College Committee and close the meeting to the what public. We have lawyer correspondence, employee relations, and union negotiations. Great. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <laughs>